Okay, today we're going to be looking at loops. And uh, loops aren't hard. They're just sometimes a little tricky. So, I've created a Java program to go along with your PowerPoint presentation that I made for our loops. Okay, now here's the loops program here. And as you can see, it's not that long. So, um, start with the while loop right here, which should be the first part of your PowerPoint presentation notes. You notice that the structure has a while here and a variable here and a condition that has to be met. Now just like in class we talk about conditions are either true or false. Now if this condition is true this while loop will be performed. Um, and it's pretty simple. So let's take a loop. <coughs> take a look. The while variable Excuse me. The while variable, while var, is uh, initialized to zero. So uh, this should be read while zero is less than seven, and this is true. Zero is less than seven, so it will print the system out that print line uh, with this statement, and also uh, the while variable. Um, where it's set to. So in this case it's uh, 0. So it would also you know, print this statement plus 0. Then at the end of the while loop here you see that the while var is incremented. Now what happens is once it hits the end of this while loop it'll go up here and test this condition again. And this time it is 1 so it'll perform it again. It'll keep on doing this until while var is actually uh, 8 or actually 7 I'm sorry once it hits 7 it 7 is not less than 7 uh, it's equal to it so it will actually break the while loop and move on with the program so I'm gonna go ahead and run it right here and uh, show you what the outcome is here and uh, take a look. Okay. Now ignore all the other stuff that's running because that's part of the other examples. Let's go here. While var is currently 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now once it hits 6 here it incremented to 7 down here and we didn't print that statement there but once it incremented it to 7 when it tested it it broke the loop so that's good and it has a lot of help files that keeps on popping up I know that's annoying but uh, we'll just live with it for right now so let's move down to the other loop and a do while loop is a lot different from a while loop. Um, a do while loop actually performs the in what's inside the curly braces before it's even tested, which is interesting. Um, so let's take a look at what we did here. This do while. So like I said before, here's a do while loop example. And in the do, you have a print statement. And it's going to go ahead and do that. It's going to go ahead and print this do while entered. And then I have a do while var that was initialized to 0. I'm going to increment that. It'll do both things. And then it'll hit the while statement to test it. Do while is greater than 2. Now, it is not greater than 2. At this point, it was 0 when it started. It got incremented to 1. And now, while it's being tested, 1 is greater than 2? That's no, that's false. So, actually, this will be run just one time. 
because it was run before it was tested. So if you notice down here, do while entered, which is the statement up here, was run once and then it was never run again. So that's pretty interesting. So, okay, I know we're going pretty fast, but loops aren't really hard, and if you play around with them, you'll notice that you could get the hang of them pretty quickly without uh, without much problems. You just have to make sure you put your semicolons where they need to be, and curly braces where they need to be, and the compiler usually helps you out with that as much as possible. See, you notice that? Okay, let's move down to the for loop. For loop is the most reused loops in Java. Um, I think because mostly it's interest, it's not not interesting. It's just easier to um, implement because you don't have to declare a variable outside of it, and it and just to use that variable for one time and one time only, if you were doing something like that. But in this case. You can make a garbage variable, which is int i, and it's like I did here, and declare it in the for loop. I, I set it to zero. I made a condition statement, meaning that if zero uh, i is less than five, and at the end of the for loop, you would increment this i. So, what's interesting about this, though, is that once the for loop is completed, and we've moved on with our code i is available for garbage collection because i cannot be sent cannot be seen from with outside the for loop it can only be seen within the for loop which you know if you were to do a print statement down here and print i you know so you get an error i cannot be resolved to a variable because well it doesn't know where i is it could only be seen within the for loop. So, by the way, I just did a little trick there that uh, I learned recently from uh, Dr. A, which many, many years of using Java, I didn't realize if you typed S Y S O control space, it actually prints out the system dot print line for you. Uh, that would have saved me a lot of time for many years, but uh, <laughs> I'm not too sure when he actually learned it either. So, um, we'll just uh, kind of use that for the future. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and look at this for loop more. Now, we know that I cannot be seen outside the for loop. Okay, this is a simple for loop. I just have a print statement in there that, that says for loop running, and then I have the variable i in there to tell you what i is at the time. So, you notice that it'll run the for loop. And it says for loop running 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Meaning that it's incrementing every time the loop is run. And every time it's run, at the first case it's 0, it prints 0. And it reaches the end of the for loop, so therefore it gets incremented to 1. It goes ahead and tests itself up here. Um, well, honestly, before this all even started, yeah, it, it, it tested itself to make sure that 0 was less than 5. But now that it's 1, 1 is less than 5. Yes, that's true. So we continue on. And 3 is less than 5, 4 is less than 5. It'll keep on doing that until it got to 5. 5 is not less than 5, it's equal to it. So therefore, the for loop is broken. And the goes on with your code after that. So. I hope this was helpful. Uh, it should be. Um, we will look more towards that. That's the majority of the chapter 4 is all about loops. And this is basically what it all boils down to is these three examples. Um, the rest of the chapter 4 is <coughs> reading in a file or printing out to a file. And uh, I will have another video on that as well as more notes. You'll notice that the PowerPoint presentation was broken. It says part 1. Well, that's because there'll be a part two, which will I post next week. I hope you're enjoying your holiday, and I will see you in class.